Two more Spider Queen. Could we have killed Azad here? I would be shocked if he wasn't. Like, I actually think he's going to be banned out here. Yeah. I uh, first of all, he is going to be played on this map. It's his strongest map right now, and I would be very surprised if he doesn't make an appearance in the draft. In fact, after the last game, I think Trick is probably going to ban him out. Just give him completely. Yeah. But what about Kerrigan Valera to kill him? Can we please go into the draft? <laughs> I would rather have Lava Wave Ragnaros than that. We got him, boys. It took a couple of weeks, but we got Kaldor on the Lava Wave train. No, no, that is not it's what official. I said. It's official. He's that, in. That is not what I said. <laughs> Guys, I had some of my Hero League games ruined by, <laughs> by Ragnaros on my team picking Lava Wave. And I'm not blaming them. I'm blaming this guy. Ruined. It's your fault. He meant to say graced by the presence of our Lord and Savior, Lava Wave Ragnaros. That Lord and Savior ran our games into the ground. I'm just saying, 70% win rate over here. Am I that good of a player, or is Lava Wave that good? <laughs> What's the answer, Kaldor? I think that your opponent, you get a carried heart. <laughs> <laughs> it might be it. Let's go into the draft here for game number two here. Two minutes, Fighter Queen. I'm still triggered by the Lava Wave. Um... Okay, again, Tomb of the spider Egg Queen, of course we talk about the new hero. One of the main reasons why Kel'Thuzad is so good, you, you heard it from us in the game before, you heard it from the pros, is simply because he is so good when you are sieging. And on this map, you are normally guaranteed to get one, two turn-ins where you can really just move in with the entire team and siege up. You have a lot of structures where you can use his chains and uh, get kills, or at least make sure that your opponent has a very tough time of defending. So especially if you are able to get early objectives with Kel'Thuzad, you can build on that that big and massive lead that you want to snowball and snowball hard. Here we go again, a phrase that you will continue to hear often as Chromie has become a bit stronger with the latest rework, even getting buffed in the live patch. Yes. And Turkey Sports thinks that it's worth it enough to go for first pick with Chromie. As if she wasn't already annoying enough. You love getting hit with spells from across the map. You love it, Kaldor. Yeah. Admit it. We already know what you think about Chromie, so we don't have to get into that anymore. But she's also pretty good against other majors, so if there is a Kel'Thuzad being picked by Dignitas, then there's a chance that Chromie can just simply hammer him into the ground. Dignitas reacts with a lot of wave clear right off the bat. Johanna, first pick even. Yeah. And we're seeing Rega with her as well. So immediately we have two heroes that are very much focused on wave clear overall, and that is... Already setting the pace here a little bit. What I like about the Johanna take too is that Johanna is typically partnered with Chromie pretty often to make sure that you have that wave clear, but also because it's a great front wall to the point where you don't want to dive past the Johanna. Johanna's not going to engage a composition for you, but she is great against dive that could come your way and that protects Chromie. So the pickup from Ding Toss takes it away completely and gives them wave clear. A great pickup for them. Leoric and Uther, though, pretty solid as well. Stitches hover on the side of Team Dignitas. Now again, as we said before, Stitches is currently one of my preferred heroes to play against Kel'Thuzad. Of course, given time, Kel'Thuzad players are going to become a bit less greedy and more accustomed to how to play the hero. But this early on in the release, it's pretty fun to see how much they overextend. In pro play, you're not going to see it all that much, but Stitches is still a threat if you can set up that flank. And uh, we've all known that Stitches on Tomb of the Spider Queen is extremely strong. Dignitas was actually the team that introduced him, but in this case they're switching now around between the two, moving maybe even to a Genji ban instead. But it's still noteworthy that Stitches would be a good ban, and they actually go through with it. So wow. that would already help if they want to play with Kel'Thuzad, but even without him, the value that Stitches gets on this map definitely makes him a hero that you need to respect here. That's yeah, a good way to play around Johanna. What if you don't have to dive past her? Instead, you bring the target to you. And when you have an Uther to go for the stun and the Chromie combo, it's going to be a kill target. So not a bad ban at all. And right now, tricked, they are going into a ban on Malfiel. So the stage is set. We could see Kel'Thuzad once again. We have already on the side of Trick Esports one mage that makes it very unlikely that Trick themselves is going to pick Kel'Thuzad. They are still lacking a tank and normally when you head into an additional damage dealer, the thought process is oftentimes that you want to have something more auto attack focused so that you have sustained damage in your lineup as well. So we're looking more towards Dignitas as a potential team to pick Kel'Thuzad. If they do, I would expect him on the last pick. 
Yeah. Right now, I'm expecting maybe a Greyman here, a little more traditional four-team mm -hmm. Dignitas, being able to get the wave clears. Typical hero, we've talked about him over and over. Great for generalization, for just fitting into a composition. But I'm more interested to see what Snitch will be playing here. Um, what? He would pick up the Greymane, right? So we would probably have Arthas Johanna then for Zelia. I would not mind Arthas at all. Ah, oh. Kel'Thas being played, so no Kel'Thuzad. Instead, Kel'Thas is going to make an appearance here. It's unlikely that they're going into both. Again, you very rarely see double mage. So they opt for Kel'Thas instead. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the Kel'Thas pick a lot. But given the setup, I would actually have thought that Kel'Thuzad might be a good option for them. Again, Chromie is a big threat. And mm. as Kel'Thas, especially with your level 1 talent, once you complete it, you have a bit more wiggle room against it. Man Attic. Well, Genji will be the pickup for Snitch here. Trick Esport on their right side. We'll need another tank. Leo won't be enough for them. Helps out the side lane. It's going to uh, be the gray main into the Nubarak. Not taking here. Nubarak instead. Of course, we talked a little bit already about Alex in particular. So Nubarak for dive together with gray main here. You were thinking Arthas? For, like, Alex really loves to play Arthas, but oftentimes when he played it, he was in that second tank position. And, uh, I mean, they've been shifting around. Rema Bola and Alex have been shifting the heroes around a lot recently. So I'm actually a bit curious to see who's going to play what. Traditionally, you would even expect Alex to be on Leoric here, but now that they are making over and over again these shot caller changes and also, like, the changes depending on which hero they play, it's interesting because it makes them also a little bit less predictable, I feel. They seem to be very flexible in that regard. Sonya now taken for the solo lane, so we're going to have Leori going up against Sonya. Sonya Leori has been winning that lane. We saw it a few times last weekend. We'll see if there's any changes that will stop that. In fact, the last time we saw Sonya versus the York, it was Alex Aproji playing that Leo, a thorough playing to Sonya. And uh, Alex Aproji, he fed a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Also didn't really know how to play in the new Leoric just yet. At least that's the impression that we got there quite a bit. So that was, of course, just after the Leoric rework hit. Now the team's had a lot more time. The build has been refined slightly and the play style as well. Since especially if you go into that ominous Wrath Royal focus build, what you really need to do after 13 is you ghost into the opponent team, you try to hit the two damage dealers, and then you just move out again. Try and keep yourself alive and just rinse and repeat the entire time. That's something that, especially Zarmany and Alex on that Friday last week when it came in for the first time and struggled with a bit. But as we said, since then, yeah. Teams overall just figured it out a little bit more how to properly use that. Yeah, if you want to see how to use it properly, look up a, a thorough from Team Expert. He pulled off the Leo very well over the weekend. Yeah. Let's go ahead and jump into game number two. Two minutes, Spider Queen will be the battleground. Dignitas is leading 1 0 over Trick Esport. Game number two Dignitas with Bakery on Rega this time. We have JPL on Johanna as Dignitas has taken the lead in the series. Main on Kel'Thas, Snitch on Genji, and Zelia on the bot lane is going to play Sonya. Trick D-Sport on the right side will be in the red. Nape will headline with the Uther. Rimmer Baller going to be playing the Leo. Crosby on Chromie going to have Tricked playing uh, a new rack with Alex Aproji, and Make will be your Grammy player. So interestingly enough, already the level one talent for Leoric, Fealty unto death. So normally what we are seeing here is consumed vitality. The reason why we're now seeing Fealty unto death is because from the get-go, we already know that Rema Baller is thinking about the solo lane against Sonya and realizes that it could be a bit rough for him. If you go into Fealty unto death, especially on this map, you gain a lot more lane sustain and that's one of the reasons I can try to get the upper hand in the lane. So already adjusting for that and not really focusing on the later on team fights with the setup. Slight turn aggression on the bottom side with Nape, Make, and Axe Proji trying to get a little bit of an experience lead for the team. Leo is actually in the top lane here trying to get a mismatch against that Sonya. Zelia will call upon his teammates and come in for a fight on the bottom side. Axe Proji living just long enough to try and escape, but they are going to be bruised pretty heavily in that engage. Yeah, they definitely took a bit of a beating there for sure. It's not only Alex who had immediately to go back to the fountain and tap, but also Uther has taken a lot of damage in this last encounter. Now, Crosby is someone that we have to pay some attention to. Keep in mind that when Chromie is being mentioned here, we're still talking about pre-patch Chromie. So uh, she will still need those 80 hits with Sandblast, not the reduced amount that is currently active on the live patch. Watching over. 
Estonia. I wonder if she can stay in this bottom lane or head to the top against Leo for now. Team Dincos is okay with keeping her down there by herself. She can be quite the bully. Uh, but that will require Trick Esport to answer back occasionally and get down there just in time. For now, they go to the middle lane to clear up, and they're actually going for JPL. Can they get a kill on this Johanna? Oh, oh the snipe! <laughs> From the back row, they get the hit in with the sandblast and take her down. So they definitely do, and Snitch is also being hit here quite hard. Now again, it's noteworthy to point out that one of the main reasons why KT, why Kel'Thuzad is not taken, while we have actually Kel'Thuz in play now for Mena, is that Chromie was super early picked on the side of Trick Esports, because that is going to pressure the mage even more. And as we pointed out, Kel'Thuzad is a bit on the weaker side when it comes to survivability because this is traditionally one of the best maps for Kel'Thuzad. First of all, his level 4 talent, his rebuy, is going to be activated super fast since we are having normally people rotate between two lanes, so you get an extra stack of regeneration globes every now and then. And also the sieging potential that you have with Kel'Thuzad is pretty fantastic, but tricked after game number one, already reacted a little bit, trying to draft the lineup that made it much more difficult for Kel'Thuzad to have that sustain to become that threat. And with Genji being on the team here for Digging Tusk, Kel'Thuz in the late game will be scary itself. Fear the sun well coming online at 16. Always great for getting those fights around the turn in. Being able to poke out. And then also the CC that he brings. It's not quite the chains, but being able to have a gravity lapse that can hit three targets. Yeah. Always a powerful tool. Of course, with Leoric now, we have Kun Vitality dropped, as mentioned, on level 1. But on level 4, Neil Peasants is still the talent to take. The extra 75% of damage against minions and mercenaries is just too good to give up on. Especially when you're playing on a map where Wave Clear is as important as it is on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Now, Wave Clear overall is always a big, big thing in any Heroes of the Storm game, but especially on this map, it's even more valuable. So, immediately taken here. And we, again, have to watch out later for 13 and 16, but of course not there just yet. This is all about the early turn-ins. Keldor, I think we need to change the way that you say Neil Peasants. It needs to be more authoritative. That's how Neil it is. Neil Peasants. Yes. Neil Peasants. Get on the ground with that knee. Bend the knee. You have to go full all in on it, man. That was way too nice. <laughs> how is that too nice? You don't... Okay, you get louder when you say it, yeah. but it's still like you're still Care Bear voice. I don't think it was Care Bear voice. It was more of like, I know I'm better than you, so I'm treating you. It's condescending. Do it again. Neil Peasants, spin the knee. It's like you're asking them. Okay, all right. I'll work on it. I'm going to be a leader by next week. You need to get a mean streak. All right, I'll get a new one. I can be mean. Neil Peasant. Yeah, there we go. That's that's already better. We can still work on it, but that's definitely... I feel definitely like such a bully when I say it like that. Yeah, it feels good, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. I'm going to let you do the Leo analysis. Neil game. Peasant. Blue Web Weavers coming online for Team Ding Toss, and they're going to start pushing in here as they get their gems dropped off. Yeah, Dignitas here immediately going straight in. They have the level 7 now as well. Trick was a bit farther ahead with the experience, but now thanks to the Web Weavers, that can quickly change. JPL again with the trademark less momentum taken on his Johanna. And in the meantime, we're seeing Rema in a lot of trouble here and nearly Ooh. falling. Snitch commits and goes in deep. Of course, the gems are being dropped here, but Marker is around to make sure that he collects all of them. Still a big kill. We'll slow down that clear up with the Web Weaver on the bottom side while Ding Toss works in the top lane, breaking open the turret, getting the experience set up, and a pretty successful start here for Dig. Yeah, definitely. Considering that when the entire objective started, they were behind in experience, they have taken a pretty massive leap. A lot of structures were taken out by them already, and it's definitely the start into the game that they wanted here. Especially if you consider that Trick hasn't turned in a single gem. They hold enough for a turn-in, no doubt, but the question is can they deliver on the turn-in before Dignitas reaches level 10? Dignitas is already delaying them here with Johanna holding that front line. Nafe moves in, will start to drop off those gems, but JPL is here to be annoying. He gets them pulled off on the back side, while Sonya even being in a spot to threaten a team fight. Trick Esport will be forced to pull back and clear out waves. It's pretty difficult for Trick to turn in right now because we have Flashlight on Johanna. We have also Genji, who is just super annoying when you're trying to turn in since he can simply poke and then dance away. So that's what Snitch is currently trying to do, interrupting as much as possible. Alex himself, by the way, with those 32 gems would be a huge part of delivering the first objective. 17, turn in already. Johanna comes in once again with a quick flash, makes sure that this turn-in is interrupted. And they are half a level away from level 10. They are trying to go for the double turn-in here. Thanks to an early heroic ability, the question is, can they deliver? And for now, it looks like they will. This is why Ding Toss has been 
doing so well the last couple weeks in their matches. They have been disciplined and they are controlling the flow of battle. And they're doing it again here on the bottom side. Trick Esport even set up five people on that bottom web weaver, but between the poke coming in that you mentioned earlier, a little bit too much. And Trick Esport pulls away and they'll go ahead and grab Merc Camps, get that pushing in the middle, and get ready for the next push that will be coming their way. Exactly. Dignitas now has their level 10. Blessed Shield, Taken, Dragon Blade, Phoenix. We have all the usual suspects here on the side of Team Dignitas and they now control the map for the next few seconds and can attempt to turn in once again. They don't quite have the gem count yet though and Trick is about to hit their own heroic abilities but of course in an ideal world they would at least try to get rid of the gems they hold so far. Rimmer in trouble. Able to get away with Nape helping him out. The 10 does connect for Trick Esport. We're going to get the uh, Cocoon set up as well as go for the Throat, Divine Shield, and March of the Black King following up with that Slowing Sands that would pick that level 9. Trick Esport advances forward on the top side, looking to finally try to drop off gems, but they have to clear their Merc Camps in the middle and make sure their opponents are drop off because Jim Dignitas does have enough gems to do their own turn in now. Yeah, and taking that camp was a really smart move by Dignitas, so they already knew that dancing around the turning point wouldn't give them enough. But the time that they invested into the mercenary camp is now something that Trick has to invest to clear it or they are going to take damage on the fort in the mid lane. So that opens up a bit of a time window. The cool thing for Dignitas is also, if they can keep Alex from turning in, then they put him into a position where he can't engage as heavily as he really wants to since he holds the majority of gems on the side of Trick. And now Dignitas has turned in. Thanks to the middle camp, pushing the mid lane back, there was space created and they could use that easily to get their own Web Weaver wave and that is the second one. And this is the moment where you're trying to snowball it to level 13 so that you once again hold the talent advantage over your opponent. Goal here is to get a fort or two. The bottom one would be a great target in Trick Esport knowing this is already setting up on the bottom side. But with Rhaegar being on the top, able to clear out those minion waves, we're going to have that top lane take a lot of damage, especially with that wall already being cleaned up. The fort, if you see on the top right, is about to be cleaned up. At the same time, Alex, you mentioned him earlier, being low on health, is forced to use uh, his disengage while we have a divine shield coming at the same time just to keep him alive. That was actually pretty crazy that we were able to get this through. Definitely worth sacrificing a divine shield to keep those 42 gems in your possession. If you would have died there, that could have been the beginning of the end. The situation is dire already as is since they lost the top four thanks to the Rhaegar push that you pointed out a bit earlier. But overall they are able to hold on to two of the remaining forts here. So the advantage of Team Dignitas is significant but it's not out of control just yet. Trick is still just one level behind, but they need to finally start to get their own turn in into play. And that's again where we're coming back to... I mean, at this point, it's not even only Alex anymore with those 40 gems that he holds. We are having 36, 37 on Grey Main, controlled by Maki here. A lot of these heroes are currently in a spot where they would really love to turn in. It's 120 gems that Trick is currently holding. That's a double turn in. Getting scarier and scarier as the moment go by. For you Chromie mains at home that are worrying about the quest here for Crosby, he's currently at a total of 38 stacks of the 80 that he will need to unlock that Echo. So a bit of an update there for you. And at the same time, we're also looking at Team Dignitas, who is setting up for defense once again. And they're 20 gems away from their own third turn in. Trick Esport needs to make a play soon, and they're going for one here on the top side as they go for JBL. Ancestral comes out, Bless Shield being used to stop the market, but that was a lot of damage and a good cooldown burn too, actually. So that might be the opportunity that Trick was looking for. Keep in mind, they're still behind one talent. 13 versus 10 in talents at this point. In levels, we still have 12 on the side of Trick Esports, half a level away from getting their next talent themselves. And the, the amount of gems is just insane. If Alex can turn in here finally, then they are in a spot where they make it work. But here comes once again Ramabala. And also JPL. JPL with the interrupt attempt, but a little bit too late, and that means that now we have the Red Web Weavers descending. So in an ideal world for Trick, they're now able to get not only this Web Weaver wave going, but also a second one right afterwards, and that could actually lead to them completely taking the lead in the experience if they play it right. Nice swing here by Trick Esport. Again, getting that ancestral healing use on Johanna was great. Made it a little bit harder for Genji to come in for that dive, so they were able to groove up a little bit harder and go for that turn in. Tricky Sport goes to the top, working on that 13, as you were mentioning, trying to move forward on the experience. Can they force anything in this top side? They have Leork and Greymane defending the middle to make sure no one floats on in, so they have definitely committed to the idea of pushing top. Cocoon, they're going deep. They're trying to go for the kill here. They went really deep, but JPL moved out the turnaround attempt, trying to move straight for mana right now but they don't get anything here a lot of time being used as the web weavers are still active at the bot lane up to the top nearly defended 
13 is here. Ominous Wrath now taken. Fully Auric as well, so he can really start to move into that back line to make sure that Mena and Sonya, plus ideally Genji, don't get as much damage output anymore. But the problem is they didn't take down too many structures with that Web Weaver wave. No, they did not. He's Only taking the turrets on the top. Sonya defended bottom easily at the same time. KT cleared out the middle lane. Trick Sport goes in for a turn and they get nothing out of it. We have two turn ins potentially for them. But Dignitas is also enough gems for a turn in on their own. But the Red Web Weavers are going to be descending once more. So Trick at this point is going to get value. And they are trying to go up to the top to snipe that fort even before the Web Weavers are on the ground. Leoric is anchoring um, them at the side, but the rest of the lanes are being pushed out by Dignitas. And that's actually a really smart move by Dick. They will mainly have to deal with the top lane, where Trick is actually starting to make play for the key ball here. They know that they are just way too far behind in experience because Dignitas soon will have level 16 available to them. So Trick is just trying to push their luck quite heavily with this one in particular. Yeah, why not? You have to make your opponent react to you somehow, especially with the Web Weavers being stuck in the middle because of the push from Dignitas. Finally, Dignitas will come over and react to that push that comes away, which allows for Trick Esports to go back to the middle. A nice little small play there, feinting some aggression to make sure they get value out of the Web Weaver in the middle, which will allow for them to open up this wall. Probably not much more, but still a good move. Well, if they play it right, they might even be able to go for the forward, but they have to be careful. Here comes the Blessed Shield. Immediately they engage on Chromie, slowing Sans is on the ground. Celia gets cocooned immediately. Nice hits by Chromie. Kalthas is down before the fight even started. Snitch gets blown away just a half a second before the Ancestral hits. And this is fantastic for a Trick. Knappe still alive. Everybody getting low. Alex may be falling, but is able to move out. Maka also in trouble against Bakery in the back. Crossbill on the run, but Chromie is down and here's the Ancestral finally coming through as Alex gets attacked and Zodas so Knappe. It looks like Trick is still gonna lose that fight even though they started with a double kill. No control for Zillia on the back line. Completely moves forward, puts Chromie in a pinch. Eventually Chromie does fall. Bakery missing the Ancestry healing had it later on for the Sonya and didn't to us in a team composition that looked like they were starting to lose important members, turn around the fight and even get a keep wall. That was actually insane. Sonya in particular just completely turned this around. That was crazy. Mena falling on Kalthas and Genji dying shortly after should have sealed the deal on the fight, but the level 16 talent that Dignitas had with Sonya, Rega, and Johanna still alive was just enough to pressure Trick and result in a triple kill. So that was an insane turnaround by them. Here it is. Go ahead and check it out. So this fight opens up with a Blessed Shield on the top side. It will hit Kuromi and Nape, as well as a new Brag. Alex Akroji will turn around and hit a really big, important Burrow charge, which was right there. Allowed for Kuromi to bring out the combo, hits Mane, burns him down, even with the Mana Attic. And then they kill the Genji, right when it pops up. Make goes in for the kill. But look at Nape and then Sonya in the top right corner. Just moving forward here, going in for the aggression. Nape goes in for some CC, but he's low. He can't do too much here, and Crosby will fall for it. Yeah, they're already low as the fight starts into here and that was really the problem and then the Ancestral comes through again. They're also incredibly low in mana as you can see here so that was another issue that they had to deal with. Not having the level 16 during half the fight added just on top of it. After the double kill just moving back would have already been a win. But now Dignitas still holds the lead. They are on level 18 right now. Tricked is about to hit level 17 themselves. In kills, the two teams are still tied. It's four kills against four, but it's this last Rep Weaver wave that we're now seeing pushing in at the bot lane that could result in the first keep of the game falling. That's right. Trick wants to be able to defend here and not allow their keep to fall, but Dignitas has different plans. They move straight on in. Even with Chromie sieging from afar, they'll be able to grab the keep. Snitch on the left side also being annoying. They're moving in for Rhaegar. Yeah, Alex is also getting in trouble. Drops the cocoon, but Snitch has already Dragon Blade activated. And the kill against Kelthas again, but the Divine Shield has been used. Uther dies, is back in ghost form and can now spam a few heals out, trying to keep Rema Baller alive. And now it's time to chase. They're attempting to move in. Rema himself is low though, and he dies at 35 gems that he just lost. Alex trying to recover as many of them as possible. JBL nearly blown away by Chromie. But at this point, Dignitas is still in decent shape, especially after, again, Rhaegar used the Ancestral to keep his teammates in play. Lack of control there for Sonya, just hurting Trick Esport very much right now. Never getting locked down. They went for K uh, KT, were able to get the pickup on Kel'Thas. Well done by them, but nothing extra from there. The Anubrak and Uther had different plans and had different targets to CC, and Sonya just spun around consistently with Baker on the backside being in a safe position. Snitch also being able to drop down the Dragonblade where need be. Dignitas able to get a couple kills, and now they're about to get level 20, Kaldor. 
Yeah, they have 20. They eliminated one keep of tricked esports on the bot lane, and they themselves still hold a fort. It's also that they were able to rob quite a few of the gems of tricked esports. I mean, don't get me wrong, tricked still has enough for a turn in. But at the same time, Dignitas is getting closer and closer to achieving a fourth turn in themselves. Right now, it's all about Genji who gets caught here for a second because Trick is trying to force this fight before 20 hits for Dignitas. But 20 is in play right now as the fight starts. Chromia sieging from afar, still doesn't have the Echo here. She's only at 64 stacks. Zelia is just charging down Rimmer on the right side. Eventually, he will Wraith walk away. Alex Abroji, not so lucky as he will have to deal with the Wrath of Sonya. Even Make too is running. Everyone is running from Sonya. Yeah, it's, I mean, Zelia is just absolutely chasing them right now. That's the death of Uther once again as Knappe falls. And the Web Weaver wave that the blue, sorry, the red team just delivered is more or less useless. They even want to go for the kill here. They're moving towards the core. It's a five versus four on the map at this point, and the level 20 is giving Dignitas enough confidence that they want to go for the core immediately. Here comes the Phoenix already. Zelia is hit by the Ancestral, and we have Snitch just working with a Dragon Blade on market, trying to get the kill against Greyman, and he does as the core falls and team. Dignitas takes the 2-0 lead in the best of five series. Brilliant core call there. All you had to do was keep Greyman away from your team and make sure Chromie doesn't hit her skill shots. Chromie not able to hit skill shots. Make being dealt with by Snitch allows for Dignitas after an important kill on Uther to move forward, get the core kill, and move up 2-0. Pretty impressive. Good control the entire time, making sure that they also control the objective. And at that point, always running with that level advantage and the talent lead. And they have 20, they get the kill. They go for call. Ding Toss looking great after the qualification for BlizzCon. Let's see if they can finish this series with a 3-0 three to three to over Trick Esport. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Zeratul is coming round. Back the is interrupted. Zeratul does get Amatha. He's Jan channeling the ulcer. No one's coming back to no deal with him. That's gonna Jan be GG. Shut up.